Welcome to your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. And we welcome your prayers at WQPHradio.org. Oh Mary, send my prayers to heaven. Don't let another day go by. You can ask the Lord to help me. When my cross gets heavy and my soul is dry. Oh, Jesus, hear my cry. Oh, Mary, send my prayers to the sky. Along with all of my intentions, every word takes flight. Hello and welcome to another edition of Your Prayer Intentions. I am quite pleased to be with you today to uh, pray with you as we pray for your prayer intentions. And I know sometimes that sounds pro forma, but I'm actually pleased because this has been, this has been a really tough Lent for me. I don't know if that happens to other people, or, or I presume it happens to somebody. But I don't remember a Lent that's been harder. There's been a lot of things going on with my work. There's been a lot of things going on in terms of personal stuff, there's been a lot of things going on with a lot of different things that have been really tense. And I found it very, very difficult even to keep up with my normal prayer schedule, to keep up my... Uh, everything has been difficult for me this Lent. That makes it very hard when you're trying to reflect on yourself and your own sins and so forth and to make yourself the better person that you wish Lent to help make you be. But part of getting through difficult things is to acknowledge that you're dealing with difficult things and not try and hide that you have difficult things. Because when we go it alone, when we decide we can do this or God's not going to help or God can't help, that's when you run into the wall. That's the trap that the enemy gives us to try and make us discount or not worry about the things God gives us to help out. And as we get closer to Easter and as we get closer to Divine Mercy Sunday, it's important to remember that God will help. and But also remember that God does not give us what we want. He gives us what we need. And that's a very important distinction to make. A lot of times we don't get what we want and we don't realize that it was what we needed. And I, I'm going to give you a great example. I, for a long time at my work, was in a sense underemployed. And it was very hard to see people get advancements and so forth when I hadn't because I've got a degree and so forth. And there were times when I was, you know, I was just struggling. And I presumed that, you know, I don't, again, to me, faith isn't believing in the existence of God, because I consider the existence of God as fact. To me, faith is understanding that God knows what he's doing, even if he's not telling me. I still make the choice. People still make their own choices because of free will. But God knows what he's doing. God's got this. And we have to have faith that God's got this. And the irony is, if I had gotten those things I wanted, those things that I thought I deserved, those things that I said, why aren't I getting this? Right now I would be unemployed. And it was it's very interesting to see where I am now versus where I would have been. And now and sometimes it takes years before you recognize the pattern or recognize that what you were given was a grace. So keep that in mind. And I'm doing my best to keep that myself. If you're in that situation too, remember, you may not recognize the grace you're given because you do not realize that you were getting what you need rather than what you want. Because the primary thing God is looking for is to help you get to the position where you will be able to make it to heaven to put you in the best possible position to say yes when your soul depends on it. And that's what it comes down to. 
So keep that in mind today as I record this. Now I'm going to do the, the gospel for this week. And again, there might be a slight variation depending on if people are going through the scrutinies. Because that there's a specific, there's a change in readings if you have people doing the scrutinies. I'm doing just the basic readings for what would be this week in this particular year. And this is from the Gospel of John. Some Greeks would come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethesda in Galilee, and asked of him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in the world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet should I say, Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said, an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this indicating the type of death he would die. Now there are several important things here. And I want to stress one thing in particular. And that's the voice from heaven. And this is not the first time that the children of Israel have dealt with the voice of heaven. If you look at the first five books of Moses, and there's, there's a moment where God says, I'm going to be passing by. I want the people of Israel to be assembled because be ready because I'm coming. And when God shows himself in the thunder and the lightning and all the stuff he shows himself to the people of Israel. People of Israel panic. And they basically say to Moses, don't do, please don't let God do this. Right? Let, well, have him talk to you and he can talk to, and you can talk to us. But, and, but that was the thing. It wasn't a question of, oh, I'm going to show through this sign or that side. I'm going to come down. I'm going to make my presence known. And people didn't want to deal with it because they were scared. So here we have a group assembled and God speaks. God speaks audibly and people try and rationalize it. Some people, just like some people understood the parables and some people didn't. Some people, oh, well, no, that's just, a, it, wasn't, it wasn't what I thought I heard. And others, no, that was an angel. I, didn't you hear that voice? Didn't you hear those words? In last week's gospel, one of the things that John talks about is that the light had come, but people preferred darkness. There are people who prefer ignorance. There are people who prefer to not know. Because if they know, once you acknowledge the existence of God, once you acknowledge that Christianity is true, which is what I always say, the, the reason to, and I've said this on this show, I've said this at, at, when I've been at appearances, I've said this to anyone who will listen to me. The reason to be a Christian is not because that it makes you feel better. Not because it's good for social justice. Not because it's better for society. The reason to become a Christian, in fact, the only reason to be a Christian is because it's true. If it's not true, then we're an Elks Club that meets on Sundays. Now, there is nothing wrong with an Elks Club. Elks clubs are nice. Elks clubs do very good things. But they are not the basis for how you live your entire life. They're just plain not. 
So, if you want to be a part of an Elks Club, that's fine. Elks Clubs are wonderful. But if you want a God, if you're going to worship a God, this is what I think you do. You acknowledge the reality and you deal with it. And in this passage, again, this is God speaking in the presence of people. And there are people who don't want to deal with it. Because once you acknowledge it, once you know, this is why people say ignorance is bliss. Once you know, then you have to make a decision. You have to decide what are you going to do about it. And there are people who would rather be in ignorance, who would rather not have to deal with it. Which is kind of sad when you think about it. So, it's a very, very interesting and important thing to consider. But that fact, I mean, everyone knows people who will deny things that are in front of them because they don't want to deal with something unpleasant. But what does a doctor do? Would you want a doctor who told you you're absolutely fine when you have a cancer or told you you don't need an operation when you need an operation or ignored things in front of their face because they were afraid that you would react badly? It's like a parent with a child. If you don't discipline a child, the child is going to grow up and be undisciplined. You want someone to tell you the truth. To see, as, as my pastor constantly says, to see yourself in the light of truth. God is truth and love and justice and mercy. Truth, love, justice, and mercy. They're not just who they are, but who he is, but his traits. You cannot receive mercy if you will not see things as they are. And you just can't. And this actually refers to this to the first reading, and I'm going to give you the first reading because this this fits with that. I mean, people do not uh, sometimes don't realize the readings are chosen. All of this is for a purpose of teaching a particular lesson, and it's been this is this is meticulously planned by the church. It has been to teach various lessons because we also often need to be reminded of lessons. Listen to these words from the prophet Jeremiah: "The days are coming," says the Lord, "will I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah." will not be like the covenant that I made with their fathers. There I took them by the hand to lead them forth from Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, said the Lord. But this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it in their hearts. I will be their God, they shall be my people. No longer will they have to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All from the least to the greatest shall know me, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their evil doing and remember their sin no more. And that prophecy is fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ and in the death and crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. That's what it comes down to. The covenant that says, I understand that you can't handle it yourself. I am going to help you. I am going to do this thing. I am going to make myself your God. I am going to glorify, you know, and, and again, I'm going to I'm going to glorify your names to Christ in the in the gospel reading. All of this stuff is going to happen. Remember Jesus' world. The voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. And that's the bottom line. People think, a lot of times people say, well, we don't want to do this because this is, the, this is for the church, this, the church, that, the church is doing this. The All of this doesn't exist for some organization. All of this exists for the sake of your soul. Your soul. This is what it comes down to. It all comes down to your soul. Do you think your soul is worth the effort? It either is or it isn't. God thinks it is. And you've got to decide that it is. If you decide that it is, then God will help you along. That's what, that's what Lent is all about. So, the thing to do now, 
The thing to do now is examine this. To examine it and see what's going down. To see what is going on with yourself. And to take the steps that Lent offers you. To take the steps that Easter offers you. To take the steps that Divine Mercy Sunday offers you. To be where you need to be. Well, now let's get to some prayer requests. We have a fella whose daughter is dealing with cancer, so we have a prayer request there. We have the two Marianne's that we have a standing prayer request for. We have a gentleman still recovering in the hospital. A young lady who has a daughter who is getting married and is also expecting a grandchild. We have a prayer request for people at, my, and this one's mine, a prayer request for people at my work. Because a lot of people are having their shifts moved. A lot of people are unsure about their jobs. We have our standing request for the intentions of the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia. For the donors to WQPH. And we are so grateful to you because without you, we don't have a WQPH. For Eric's standing request. For Mary's standing request. For Nancy's standing request. For the pastors in the area standing request. A special request for all those who are dealing with financial anxiety. A special request for all those who are hesitating to come back to the faith. They're hesitating to take the step to get things going. For the two Mary Ann's, for a lady whose daughter is dealing with cancer, for a man whose mother is dealing with cancer, for a gentleman who is having all sorts of medical problems and having to try to deal with it. And these are the prayer requests we're going to pray for today. And because we dealt with the gospel where God announced himself to the people, today we're going to jump all the way to the beginning of the rosary and pray the Annunciation. Because it, it works with that. So we're going to pray this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first joyful mystery is the Annunciation. We offer the Lord Jesus this first decade in honor. Oh, I'm going to have to stop for a second. All right, that's interesting. That is the second week in a row that I've actually literally gotten a call that has a prayer request for it while I'm about to record the prayer. So we have a prayer request for a gentleman's two friends. He didn't give any more details than that, but a prayer request. And literally, the call just, I literally paused to get this call to get these prayer requests in. So, again, this is what God does. This is what God does. So as again, we're playing the first First, joyful mystery, the Annunciation we offer thee through this mystery and through the intercession of thy Holy Mother of profound humility. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners. Now is the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now with the hour of death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now with the hour of death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners, now with the hour of death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now with the hour of death. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most in need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the Annunciation come down to our souls. Amen. And this is next is for those doing the indulgence calendar. So we're going to offer these prayers for the uh, intentions of the Holy Father for the sake of the indulgence calendar. And I'm offering these prayers for the person whose day it is on the indulgence calendar, the day I'm recording this. Glory be to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, for the grace of the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of death. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hell be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. A rod, rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. We pray all these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to remind everybody, before we do our closing prayer, that if you have prayer requests, put them up on the prayer wall at wqphradio.org slash prayer wall. It'll ask you to confirm, and they'll send you a code when you put in your email to confirm that you're not a bot. Just post your prayer requests in there. We are very happy to pray for your prayer requests, but I can't pray for them unless I know that they're out there. So please throw your prayer requests up there, and we'll be happy to pray for them. And now a closing prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Holy Spirit upon this show, upon this station, upon all the stations carrying this show, and all the people listening whether for the first session or the second or be a podcast, to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your son Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus Christ our Lord, and we make it in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And remember, nobody on Good Friday realized that Easter was coming. So if your life is going having in a good Friday, don't be surprised to see Easter come next. Goodbye. God bless you. See you next week. On the WQPH community calendar. The Knights of the Columbus Council, I think it's 15962, which is shared by St. Bernard's and St. Anthony's, is doing a calendar raffle for April. So they're going to be selling calendars all during March, 10 bucks for an entry, and then there's a drawing for every day in April for $25 or more. If you win once, you can continue to win. Check after the Masses at St. Bernard's. I don't know if they're selling them after Masses at St. Anthony's, but if you want to do that as a fundraiser for the Knights, here's a chance to get involved there. On the WQPH Community Calendar. 40 Days for Life is happening right now. The most recent figures from the DPH show that 5,058 children lost their lives at Planned Parenthood in Boston in 2022. We need to be there. The following events will be happening at Planned Parenthood, 1055 Commonwealth Avenue in Boston, Massachusetts. See the entire list of events on the 40 Days for Life visual calendar, 40daysforlife.com slash Boston. That's 40daysforlife.com slash Boston. Coming up on Friday, March 15th, join us as we pray the Stations of the Cross and the Divine Mercy Chaplet, led by Father Sinista Ubi Parapovic. Come stand up for life and make reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus at Planned Parenthood, 7 p.m. Then on Saturday, March 16th, join us outside Planned Parenthood Abortion Center for the Stations of the Cross and the Divine Mercy Chaplet in Spanish, led by Father Thomas Domeret at 10.30 a.m. Then on Sunday afternoon, there will be a family vigil, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. We invite families to come pray for the and to abortion. All ages are welcome at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at Planned Parenthood, 
Then on Tuesday, there will be an afternoon rosary vigil on March 19th. Please join us as we pray the Holy Rosary and the Divine Mercy Chaplet and witness for life at 2 o'clock in the afternoon at Planned Parenthood. 1055 Commonwealth Avenue in Boston, Massachusetts. See the entire list of events on the 40 Days for Life vigil calendar, 40daysforlife.com slash Boston. That's 40daysforlife.com slash Boston. Some additional events for 40 Days for Life, Saturday, March 16th at 10.30, Pro-Life Mass at the Fatima Shrine, 155 Washington Street in Brighton, every third Saturday. And on Thursday, March 21st at 7 p.m., a free Zoom webinar, Advocacy for Life, a Successful Approach. It's an important educational event for parents, activists, clergy, DREs, and catechists. Contact Mary Elizabeth at M-A-E-L-D-E at AOL.com. That's M-A-E-L-D-E at AOL.com or call 617-285-9008. 617-285-9008 for more information. Please note that the webinar is free. Together, we can make a difference. On the WQBH community calendar, there's adoration at St. Bernard's Parish Mondays and Tuesdays. Mondays from 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tuesdays from 8.30 to 4 p.m. And at St. Cecilia's Parish, there is adoration Fridays from 9 after the 9 o'clock mass to noon and Wednesdays after the 9 o'clock mass to noon. However, they're having problems finding people for the Wednesday adoration. So if you are available and would like to do adoration on a Wednesday, check with the office at St. Cecilia's Parish and sign yourself up because if they're not able to get sufficient people for Wednesday, they're going to have to drop that Wednesday adoration. So check in, see if you have the free time. And it's a great thing to do as we're getting ready for our Lenten journey because after all, Lent is a time of reflection. Lent will be a time to look at ourselves. If we're going to get ourselves ready for Lent, and it's an early Lent and an early Easter this year, great way to get yourself prepared, adoration. So check out down at St. Cecilia's if you're free for that adoration on Wednesdays, and you can be a great help there. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for, or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off, and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at Comcast.net. Let me repeat that. It's WQPH893 at Comcast.net, and we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, Tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.